I love big blockbusters. That's a huge chunk of what I cover on this channel. But one of the things I love to do with Sean Chandler Talks About is help people find movies that they've never heard of before that becomes one of their new favorite films. So today I'm sharing 10 movies that I think are underrated, underwatched, or underappreciated. Let's talk about it. Now the term underrated is kind of a tricky term because everyone has a different point of reference. Some of the movies that I'm going to mention in here, most people my age probably have heard of. Other movies on here got good reviews but didn't do all that well at the box office. Others were films that did well at the box office but kind of got forgotten by time so I can kind of introduce them to some of my younger audience. So. Keep that in mind as we go into this. Also, there is a companion video to this over on my Patreon page with 10 more underrated films. If you don't know what Patreon is, it's a membership site where I do a pair of uh, exclusive live streams every single week. I have a number of exclusive videos like the companion video to this one. Join at $2 per month, $21 per year. You get access to all the live streams, all the exclusive videos. $5 per month, you get your name on my end card. And at the top tier, you can do a one-on-one -on -one video chat with me each month that you are a member at that level. The link is down below in the description with more information about that and let's get started. Kicking things off, Love and Monsters and this is the most recent film on this list. It came out in fall of 2020. So in a window of time where theaters were shut down, the world was kind of in chaos, you had this movie that just kind of got lost in the middle of everything. Essentially it's a, a post-apocalyptic film uh, about a world where monsters have kind of taken over and this guy sets out on this journey of love to find this girl that he had a crush on before the world collapsed. And it's similar if you just look at the plot synopsis to a number of other films, one of them being Zombieland in a number of different ways, but it has very much its own tone and it manages to have all the monster action that you want, a little bit of humor in there, a little bit of romance of sorts in there, though it's not really a love story with the way it, it's more about kind of moving on and accepting your place. And it's not exactly a straight love story, but also it's very poignant at times. And there's these moments that are just so emotionally profound at very unexpected times where you're just watching it and it pauses to have characters reflecting on what happened before. It's a film that I just thought I was going to watch a silly monster movie and it turned out being my favorite movie of 2020. Now, granted, not a lot of movies came out in 2020, so it was a lighter competition, but this is one of those films that everyone that I know that has watched it has loved it, it has a great score on Rotten Tomatoes, but because of when it came out, it just got lost amongst the chaos. Next up, The Mask of Zorro. This is a fantastic rendition of the Zorro mythology with Antonio Banderas being perfectly cast in the film. This was the breakout role for Catherine Zeta-Jones, and then you also have Anthony Hopkins in there. It's just a great swashbuckler. It did solid numbers when it came out in the late 90s, when I was in high school, but it's one of those movies that feels a little bit like it got lost by time of movies people talk about from the late 90s. This one just doesn't get mentioned as much, and there's been a handful of people that I've recommended that they check out this film, and everyone that's checked it out has been like, that's like a really good, solid adventure film. Like, it has plenty of humor in it, tons of, like, really nicely choreographed swordplay, a solid emotional arc, uh, multiple solid emotional arcs for kind of both of our Zoros that are in the film. There's plenty of revenge in the journey. There's there's daughters, there's fathers, all kinds of great stuff. And there's directed by Martin Campbell, who did Goldeneye, and then he did Casino Royale. And so a really solid director, fantastic cast, just a, a really good blockbuster, good old-fashioned adventure. Next up, Wind River. This one came out a little over five years ago. It's a movie written, directed by Taylor Sheridan. It was well-received when it came out, but it's been overshadowed by most of Taylor Sheridan's other work, whether you're talking about writing Sicario or Hell or High Water seems to have gotten more buzz when it came out than this film. And then, of course, doing Yellowstone over the last several years. That's come its own, like, juggernaut. And in the midst of it, you have another really solid little thriller. This 
this one starring Jeremy Renner, Elizabeth Olsen. You got a little bit of John Bernthal in there as well. And it's it's just a solid investigation story with um, an interesting atmosphere that you go to. It's very Taylor Sheridan. He loves kind of very outdoorsy characters and environments. It's that type of movie. Feels like a throwback, but it's also very much in that modern vein because he does have such a distinct style of how he tells his stories. And so if you've liked Sicario, Yellowstone, and are looking for a thriller and you haven't seen this one, it's one that a number of people seem to have overlooked. Moving right along, we have Warrior. If you've been a follower of this channel for any amount of time, you've probably heard me recommend this film before. This has been my go-to movie recommendation since before I started this YouTube channel. And essentially, it is an MMA movie that came out about 13 years back. It stalls Joel, Joel Edgerton, Tom Hardy right before he really broke out into superstardom, and Nick Nolte. And it's a family drama with an MMA skin wrapped around it where it's about this very broken family trying to restore the family dynamic through this MMA tournament. I've said before, in many ways, it out Rocky's Rocky. It has all the things that you want with characters that you're deeply invested in, conflicting motivations leading into our tournament, and just the way that it's able to build up tension, build up underdogs, and just have fantastic fights is amazing. Essentially, when you get like halfway through this movie, the tournament starts, and it's just nonstop from there until the credits roll of just tense, awesome fights where you're really invested. Wondering, are they going to be able to pull through? Will they be victorious? And so just a fantastic sports drama, um, really powerful stuff. Everyone that I've recommended it to has said that they thoroughly enjoyed the film. I recommended it in a couple videos several years back, and there was a window of time where almost every day for about four months straight, someone DM'd me saying, I checked out Warrior. I loved it literally almost every single day. And I still get messages from some time to time from people saying that to me. I believe this is the oldest one on this list, Dark Man. And this is a movie that I slept on for a very long time for a very funny reason. Back when I was a child and I first saw the trailer for this movie, I literally passed out. <laughs> There's a whole backstory to this. But as much as I like really violent and gory movies now as an adult, I was very squeamish and still kind of am squeamish about real world blood, injuries and gore, needles, drawing blood, things like that. So I saw the trailer for this movie, misinterpreted what I was seeing based off of having seen a video of plastic surgery recently, and I passed out from watching the trailer for this film. So I didn't watch it for a very long time. And whenever I first watched it, it wasn't in the right head set mind space. But over the last few years, this has become one of these movies that I put on all the time. It is early Sam Raimi. It's right after Evil Dead 2. And he'd wanted to do a comic book movie, wanted to do a Doctor Strange movie, couldn't get the rights to it. So he invented his own superhero, Dark Man, played by a pre-Schindler's List Liam Neeson. And uh, like, you've got like this is an incredible actor in the lead. And essentially, it's a guy that makes these He's working on synthetic skin for burn victims, becomes horribly disfigured, and then uses this technology to get revenge on the people that wronged him. And so it's packed with highly stylized Sam Raimi-isms. If you like pure Sam Raimi, it is all over this movie, while also being basically the plot of any other action thriller revenge story from the early 90s, which I also love those movies. So combining comic booky stuff, weird, campy Sam Raimi that's highly stylized, Liam Neeson in an action thriller over 15 years before Taken, and an action thriller, I'm all on board for it. Also, they did some direct-to-video sequels with Arnold Vosloo, The Mummy, taking over. I don't uh, I, I think they're actually pretty good. If you if you like direct-to-video 90s movies, if you're into that kind of thing, I understand that's a very niche thing. I think they're actually decent follow-ups, though Arnold Vosloo is absolutely nothing like Liam Neeson. They have entirely different energies that they give off. Today's video is brought to you by Raycon. It's that time of the year where I'm trying to work out more. I gotta mow my lawn every weekend, and I'm doing a lot of travel. And everything is better with Raycon 
everyday earbuds. Raycon offers amazing quality audio at half the price of other premium audio brands. Don't just take my word for it. There are tens of thousands of five-star reviews. Raycon's optimized gel tips are designed to fit comfortably in your ears to actually stay there, whether you're going for a long jog or mowing the lawn. A couple weeks back, I was at South by Southwest and I'd have to wait in lines hours every single day. I just slip my Raycons in, listen to music or an audiobook, and I didn't even notice they were there. And with eight hours of playtime and a 32 hour battery life, I don't have to worry about whether they're up for the task. They have three customizable sound profiles, so whether I'm listening to music or an audiobook, it sounds perfect. They have a noise isolation mode as well as an awareness mode, depending on if I want to cancel out the world around me or if I need to be able to hear what my kids are up to. Go to buyraycon.com slash Sean Chandler today to get 20 20% off your Raycon order plus free shipping. That's right, you'll get 20% off and free shipping at buyraycon.com slash Sean Chandler. Buyraycon.com slash Sean Chandler. Then we have Overlord. This is a movie that came out back in 2018. Simply put, it's Nazi zombies. <laughs> That's what the movie is. If you've ever played some of the Call of Duty games where they do Nazi zombies, this is a movie version of it with a, a bunch of soldiers going in to attack the Nazis only to realize that the Nazis are developing zombies. So you have stealth stuff going on where they're trying to sneak into the base. You have zombie action. You have freak experiment stuff kind of going on with it. Uh, you, of course, have all the action, the chaos that comes with it. Stars Wyatt Russell. So he's becoming kind of a more of a name for himself over the last few years being USA agent and then starring in Monarch and well, <laughs> Night Swim in January. Maybe not that one. But so this is him as a soldier battling Nazi zombies, which right there, that like that's you, you sold me on the movie right there. And then it delivers kind of this high energy, chaotic version. When you say Nazi zombies, this movie actually delivers what you want from that premise and that concept. Here's a fun one my wife and I'll just throw on randomly. Chef. This is a John Favreau film that he did about 10 years back where he had put out Iron Man and then he did Iron Man 2 and then he put out Cowboys vs. Aliens and he just did all these big blockbusters for big studios and he felt like he'd kind of lost himself a little bit in it, to it, in it. So he went back to his roots and did this much smaller film where he stars in it and it feels pretty autobiographical <laughs> where, except using the chef metaphor where he plays this chef that was a fantastic chef that kind of gets lost with this job that he has at a fancy restaurant, falls out of love with his cooking and is getting frustrated with the critics and does some stuff. And so he kind of goes back to his roots and decides to start a food truck or launch a food truck. And it's filled with all of his friends. Scarlett Johansson's in it for a little bit. Robert Downey Jr.'s in it for a little bit. Like everyone is somebody in this movie. And it, it's just like a nice feel good movie. You can feel John Favreau's passion for the story being told as well as for food, as he's a guy that loves to cook and loves this sort of thing. It's just like a great feel good movie and one that like in light of the fact that he did this right after doing a bunch of studio stuff and then after this movie, he went on and he did Jungle Book, Lion King, and now he's in Mandalorian world. You feel like he needs to do another one of these where he goes back to that small passion project that reminds him of why he got into this in the first place and remind him of his passion. But just a, a, just a nice little film that just puts a smile on your face. Speaking of movies my wife and I frequently watch together, Frailty is not one of those movies. So way back during the first year of our marriage for Halloween, I decided to put on a scary, intense thriller that didn't have a lot of gore in it so my wife would enjoy it, thinking like, yeah, let's, let's put something on for Halloween. Put on frailty. This was a terrible, terrible life choice as it's like a psychological horror film where you don't really know if the dad is crazy or what exactly is going on in this story where this dad believes he's having visions from God telling him to kill these demons that are disguising themselves as people and he's bringing his kids along for the murders. 
I thought it was such a clever, well-crafted story that kept you guessing all the way until the very end of the film and you figure out everything else that's going on. My wife, <laughs> to the credit of the film, did not respond well to the film. I hated it, had a terrible emotional reaction to it because it just messes with you so much. And she does not like her movies to mess with her the way that this movie messed with her her um so like it's like infamous in our marriage that's almost 18 years old now of the movie that went the worst when i showed it to her but for that exact same reason if you like clever psychological horror supernatural elements or maybe supernatural elements it's got a um, young matthew mcconaughey in it it was it stars it was directed by bill paxton very cool movie i loved it my wife did not. Our next to last one on this list, Fighting With My Family, another one of the more recent films on this list. This is a sports dramedy about the real life professional wrestler Paige and kind of her life story. I don't really follow professional wrestling, so I did not know who she was going into this film. Likewise, going into this film, I did not know who the lead actress Florence Pugh was. Leaving the film, I was like, I think that Florence Pugh, whoever this girl is, probably is going to have a future in Hollywood. But beyond that, I just think it's a really solid sports dramedy. It's actually directed by Stephen Merchant, one of the creators of the original British office, as well as an actor that's been in any number of films. And what it just does a great job of is delivering all of the underdog beats that you want in a story like this, all of the setbacks, but it also finds a way to kind of play them out in unexpected ways. It subverts expectations, but not in the frustrating manner, but in the way of a story that's smarter or a, a script that's smarter than the audience and which treats characters as multi-layered. And so you might have some of the beats that you see in other sports films, but it plays them out in a much more complicated manner. And you realize that you as an audience member were misled by your own preconceived notions and biases and expectations of the genre. And so you get the payoffs, you get the setbacks, you get the emotional beats. There's plenty of humor in there. You get a few moments with The Rock. You got a good bit of Vince Vaughn. Nick Frost is in here, Lena Hetty. So it's a great cast, um, uh, just a, a great story. Rewatched it just a few months back and it was just as good as I remember. Remember. And my final recommendation, The Rocketeer. This is an adaptation of a comic book called The Rocketeer that is a World War II period piece film about this guy that gains access to this jetpack and ends up battling Nazis in Hollywood. And it's just a great throwback adventure. It's not like Indiana Jones, but it has a lot of the same energy as Indiana Jones. It was directed by Joe Johnston, who was heavily tied to Lucasfilm and worked on a bunch of the classic Star Wars Indiana Jones films. And then he became his own director. He did Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, The Rocketeer, of course, the original Jumanji, Jurassic Park 3, Captain America, The First Avenger. So he's really good at directing adventure films and and you know, taking you back in time, and you feel that with this film. It has a very young Jennifer Connelly in it as the love interest. You have Timothy Dalton in a key role inside the film. There's a lot of familiar faces in it. One of the odd ones in here, or not an odd ones about the film, the lead guy that plays the Rocketeer, uh, Billy Campbell, He's one of those great mysteries of why this guy didn't go on to have a bigger career. He did have some other big roles, but never really took off the way that you would think he would. I, I would have thought that he would have. He's actually almost cast as Riker on Star Trek The Next Generation. So There's like a series of things that almost happened for him. And he got this movie that Disney thought was going to be this big tentpole film. And then it just kind of wasn't. It didn't take off the way that they'd hoped, and it only did okay at the box office. So those of us that saw it fell in love with it and been re-watching it for over 30 years now. In fact, I went to Disney World the summer that this movie came out, and I uh, I met the Rocketeer in person, and he, he flew off right in front of me. That's pretty exciting for me back in the early 90s. But kind of fizzled out, but it has a very strong legacy because it's a solid film 
And because it's a period piece, it ages really nice. It's got a fantastic four from James Horner. So if you like those Indiana Jones types adventures, Captain America, the first Avenger, the original Jumanji, highly recommend checking out this film. Just a solid, fun action adventure. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, there is a companion to it over on my Patreon page with 10 more underrated films I do recommend that you check out. The link is down below in the description if you want to learn more about Patreon. Thank you so much for watching and keep talking movies and TV too much. Bye-bye.